agenda item 7C, this is the Solicitor General's request for the Violence Against Women Act grant application. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Chairman. Sir. How are you? The commission. I've come here before you today to uh, ask the Commission's approval of the Solicitor General's application for a Stop VAWA grant. Uh, Stop VAWA stands for Services Training Officers Prosecution and Victims Against Women Act. This is a federal grant that was instituted in 2005 and specifically allocates funds to help that are focused on crimes against women. Uh, just, it's a little bit different from the other uh, grant, VOCA, which is Victims of, of Crime Act, that currently uh, funds two of our vic, uh, victim advocates' positions. One of the great things about Wawa is it allows us, it allows you to actually fund prosecutor positions, which I'm about to hopefully prove that we are certainly in need of. Uh, I have one assistant solicitor general. This position was created in 1999. Again, it was, all, it was pursuant to a grant, uh, is my understanding. 2010 census shows Lowndes County is, is, has the 20th highest population in the state of Georgia. Based on information provided by the administrative offices of the court in 2016, out of the 71 state courts in, Lowndes, in Georgia, Lowndes had the seventh most uh, criminal cases filed. The following counties had larger populations but actually had fewer case filings, uh, being Gwinnett, Chatham, Cherokee, Richmond, Muskogee, Forsyth, Bibb, Houston, Douglas, Clark, and Carroll. <coughs> Again, all this information is provided by the administrative offices of the courts. Also, case, our caseloads have increased dramatically since 2011 when Government Deal uh, instituted a lot of these uh, criminal justice reforms. And uh, some of these reforms included reclassifying many of the offenses which were once felonies and turning them uh, uh, to misdemeanors, such as forgeries, theft, shoplifting, bad checks, and terroristic threats. Naturally, uh, none of this uh, criminal justice reform provided for any additional funding from the state to the counties to help uh, alleviate the, the additional caseload on Solicitor General's offices. Since 2014, our caseloads have increased by an average of 72.5% every year. And this is a reason, I think, why this commission approved the creation of the second state court judge in 2014. And certainly, Judge Golden, the second judge, has been very helpful in state court. And quite frankly, we can have court a lot more often and address and dispose of the cases further. I know Commissioner Evans, Commissioner Greiner, uh, headed the Lowndes Criminal Justice Reform Committee, and one of uh, your goals was to reduce the jail population. Uh, the commission created the, the position of court uh, release services coordinator to, to, to help in this regard. And Mr. Westbury advised me that as a result of a lot of these reforms, in 2017, the county saved $1,315,643.72 in jail costs compared to the previous year. According to Ms. Mr. Westbury, he, he expects that these savings actually to increase uh, in, in 2018. Uh, what I will say is that it will be a challenge to, to sustain this, this, this success if some of the staffing levels of the Solicitor General's office is not addressed. Uh, before we added this ad additional judgeship, it took two prosecutors and one support staff in my office to properly serve as court. Obviously, having a second judge means you're having a second courtroom. You're, you're taking one prosecutor out, putting them in another courtroom, and I'm having to pull legal secretaries from my office to help uh, uh, help with court. Obviously, if prosecutors and support staff are in court, they're not in the office of processing and preparing these cases. And obviously, this creates almost a zero margin for, for error. If, for example, my assistant who had the flu two weeks ago can't come to work, I'm sending a legal secretary to do what really a lawyer should be doing. Like today, we have court at 9 o'clock. I'm here today making this, uh, th this presentation. I'm having to le uh, send uh, a legal secretary to do my job. More court all, uh, also means less office time preparing the cases for court. When I started as, as, as a solicitor general in 2012, we were generally scheduled for court 11 days out of the, your normal 20 working days in a month. In 2017, it, that's up to 16 out of 20. Obviously, to address the jail population, we've added two additional arraignment dates, an additional probation revocation day. And, and while we're very proud of the, the DUI accountability court that Judge Golden is, uh, is, uh, is serving under, it's also added two additional days of court to our calendar. I did a survey of solicitor generals in the state with, ha with two judges similar to Lounge. Uh, Bibb County has six assistant solicitor generals, Fayette has five, and Muskogee has seven. All of these coats, uh, all of these counties also had smaller caseloads than Lowndes in 2016. A good uh, comparison is how our caseloads compared to the DA's office. In the last year, they opened 3,100 files, 
Our office opened 3,300 files. They have nine prosecutors. Again, we have two. And cases come to state court about three times as fast as they do in superior court. And with us trying to address the jail population, they're coming to court a lot faster, too. Obviously, it's been an increasing challenge to keep up and process and dispose of these cases. The current staffing levels, there's just not enough time to properly handle these cases correctly. I know in the last two years, I've had uh, three uh, support staff and, and one prosecutor uh, resign just because of, of the workload. We're hoping to be aw awarded funding for an additional prosecutor and victim advocate position through this grant. Uh, this prosecutor will handle only domestic violence cases against women, which is roughly 30 percent of our caseload. When I started as uh, Solicitor General in 2012, I found out very quickly like, was that your domestic violence cases and your DUI cases were your most serious most litigated, most time-intensive, most contentious cases. So starting in 2013, uh, I decided that my other only prosecutor would only handle DUI cases, which is about 14% of the caseload. Obviously, that means yours truly handling the other 86%, which normally we, we average about 3,000 files a year. That's about 2,600 files I'm handling uh, yearly in addition to my other duties and responsibilities as Solicitor General but it's been worth it. Generally, the conviction rates for DUI is about 91%, and that's certainly something we want to improve in domestic violence cases. Right now, we're, we're, our, our, our uh, conviction rate is around 50%, but we're also uh, dismissing about 31% of the cases. Again, having an additional prosecutor will allow more time to prepare cases for court. A uh, third prosecutor means quicker court, means more office time, being more accessible to lawyers, law enforcement, victims, and the general public. Currently, we're in court all the time and all day. And obviously, if, if uh, all of this lead to faster disposition of cases, it means a further decreased jail costs, uh, indigent defense fees, and, of course, quicker recovery of restitutions and fines and fees uh, from defendants. If our request is granted in full, uh, it, we're... It, the, the grant requires a 25% match, either in cash, volunteer, in, in kind hours, or a combination of both. Um, we hope to meet half of the match, 12.5%, through volunteer hours, which is what we've been doing to meet our match with our two other grant applications. What we are asking the county is, is to, be, to provide a 12.5% match. If our, our, if our full amount is, is granted, that would uh, be capped at $19,188 to cover the remaining match. And of course, it would be adjusted as, as the award is, is, is adjusted. And my position is that it's a good investment to fund too much needed positions. Um, even though the award year begins April 1st, uh, we would not fill this position until July 1st of this year so that the, uh, the, the match from the county would be part of the, the, the next year's budget. So with that, uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions the commission may have. Is your assistant solicitor still? Just handling DUI cases? Correct. He's only handling 14% of the workload? Right. Why, why do you keep him there? Well, it's just I found that those cases take longer to prepare for. They're, they're litigated. They're, they're, they're the cases that are tried the most. And it, it was just, you know, my goal was to have one prosecutor handling just those impaired uh, driving cases and another uh, handling just domestic violence cases simply because those are our two more, most serious types of charges, and they, they require the most attention. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, one, more, one more question, Chairman. Okay. What percentage of your caseload is traffic-related? Oh, I mean, if you're going to count every, everything traffic-related, I would say you're counting every traffic ticket that's filed in court. Over 80%, I would say. So traffic violation bureau would help decrease your workload? Well, it wouldn't decrease it. It kind of reclassifies it. We're still dealing with the same amount, the same cases. What traffic violation does, or violation bureau, is it stops it from being a criminal offense. It's basically a civil penalty. So you're not entitled to a jury trial. You're not entitled to attorney's, attorney's fees um, or a, a, an appointed attorney basically makes it a civil violation. Uh, once it's up and running, the goal is certain offenses, and a majority of them will be of the traffic offenses, you run it, you're just filing it under a different classification system. But you're, they're still coming to court uh, the same manner 
as they're doing now. It's just that uh, the way we handle them will, will change a little bit, but it's not necessarily going to decrease the amount of cases that, that's coming in. But it will help in that, you know, someone can ask for a jury trial now on a seatbelt violation or ask for a lawyer, you know, for a $15 ticket. You're going to address a, a lot of those, those problems once we, we have the traffic violations. Is DUI included in that 80 percent? No, that's a separate. Generally, it's your minor, you know, your speedings, your your, uh, your minor moving violations. Your DUIs would still be criminal cases, along with your suspend anything that would suspend your license. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anything on 